Hi guys, welcome back. This is Aganan Zero, and I have another great transport chopper video for you today. But before we get started, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who watched my previous transport chopper video, the Flying Fortress one. Please check that out. You can go view that on my channel. And thank you everyone for giving me the thumbs up for that video, for leaving comments. Uh, you guys have motivated me to make even more videos for Battlefield 3. So subscribe to my channel, stay tuned, and I look forward to releasing more videos for you guys in the future. Okay, so let's get started. So in this video, I wanted to show you guys some evasive flying with the transport chopper. Uh, with the recent patch that came out in Battlefield 3, it's really easy now for the enemy team to get a laser designation lock on you. And basically what that means is that once that laser comes onto your helicopter and you're locked on, a engineer with a javelin or someone in a tank with a guided missile can lock onto you very quickly. They don't need direct line of sight. And as soon as they fire that missile off, it's basically a one hit kill. Um, even with your flares in the transport chopper, if they have a laser lock on you, that's not going to do anything to the missile, it will come at you and it will kill you. If you were locked on by an engineer with a stinger missile, then you might be okay by just popping your flares. But because the enemy has a laser lock on your transport chopper, that basically means that regardless of if you use your flares or not, that laser lock is still going to be on you. So that's when it's time to do some evasive flying. Evasive flying is a combination of a few things. The first thing is distance. As soon as a laser lock comes on you, you're going to want to create as much distance as possible from whoever has a lock on you. This can be pretty difficult to do, because in most cases you're not going to know where the laser lock is coming from. In this video you can see me flying the chopper in first person view, and I'm pretty limited by what I can see outside my helicopter. Yes, you can look left and right, but you're still pretty limited by what you can see. If I'm flying the helicopter in third person view, then I have a better view of the surroundings around my helicopter as well as what's going on, so you might have a better chance of spotting where that laser lock is coming from. If you can see where the laser is coming from, it's important that you communicate that position to the gunners in your helicopter. Easier said than done, right? If you're playing with a bunch of mates on voice comms, then it's no problem, just tell them where it is. But, for example, if you're playing on a public server and the people in your helicopter are a bunch of strangers, and what I like to do is try and orient the helicopter so one of the gunners is facing where the laser is coming from and hopefully that person is intelligent enough to try and shoot that laser out. But in most cases, you're going to want to get as far away from that laser as possible. So that's when we do some evasive flying. To be effective at evasive flying, you need to know the maps that you're flying on. It's no good getting a laser lock on you and doing a 180 and flying in the opposite direction, hoping that distance alone will break the lock and you'll be safe because more than likely you've already got a couple of missiles chasing you. So instead, what you want to do is know the maps that you're flying on, know the environments, know the geography of the landscape, know where the buildings are, know where cliffs are that you can hide your helicopter behind. By knowing the maps inside and out, you can quickly get your helicopter into a safe position. In this video, you see me flying very close to buildings, flying low, low radar in order to prevent the missiles coming at me and to prevent laser lock. When you hide your helicopter behind a tall building or below a cliff, you not only stop the laser lock from locking onto you, but any missiles that are coming at you will most likely hit the environment around you, whether that be a building, a cliff or whatever. When you do this, you don't want to stay stationary for too long, just in case there's infantry near you that have RPGs or javelins and can quickly lock onto you. You want to always try and keep moving. But again, use that environment on the map to save you from getting laser locked on and to stop those missiles from coming in and hitting your helicopter. Evasive flying is not just about breaking laser lock. It also makes it very difficult for attack choppers, scout choppers and jets in general to get a good shot on you. In this video, you can see me flying really close to tall buildings. I'm flying really low to the ground at high speeds. And I'm using my environment effectively to deter people from chasing me because when they see this going on, they either have to make a decision to go in and chase after me, and more than likely they'll probably hit a building and just crash and burn, or they'll just give up chasing you, leave you alone, and go do something else. If they do stop chasing you and you're completely out of harm's way, then that's when it's time to go aggressive. 
When going aggressive in the transport chopper, you want to have both gunner positions full, preferably with people that you know and preferably communicating with those people on voice comms. You also want to have someone as an engineer with the repair tool in the back repairing your helicopter just to negate any damage that you might get from uh, random shots from machine guns, from infantry or the odd stinger or two that might come from an engineer. Now if you're not playing with friends or you're not using voice comms, it's really important that you try to communicate to the gunners in the back where those targets are. And the best way to do this is to orient the helicopter so that the gunners have a direct line of sight on the targets you want them to shoot at. When the gunners start shooting at those targets, whether they be on the ground or in the air, try and keep the helicopter as stable as possible. Also, try and be aware of gunners overheating their guns. It's no good orienting a helicopter for someone who can't fire their gun. So when you realize that the gunner has overheated his gun, quickly switch to the other side so that the other gunner can have a go. In my experience, there have been very few occasions where both gunners have been shooting out of the side of the chopper and getting lots of kills. In most situations, you'll find that you want to be circling around a target, having one gunner shooting down at that target area. And when his gun overheats or he can't shoot anymore, switch over so that the other gunner can shoot down at that target area. And basically, you want to be following this pattern. This way, you're constantly raining down bullets on the target, but also you're giving both gunners in your helicopter a go at shooting targets. I think I've pretty much covered everything that I wanted to say for evasive and aggressive flying with the transport chopper. Just remember guys that when you are piloting the transport chopper, not only are you a transport chopper with guns on the side, but you're also a mobile spawn point, not just for your squad, but for your entire team. With that in mind, you always want to be playing the objective. So in conquest mode, you want to be either attacking or defending capture points. Always have your helicopter in a position where your team can spawn on you and get out of your chopper and attack and defend those capture points. When playing rush mode, I believe the only time you get to use the transport chopper is if you're on the team that's attacking. So when you're piloting the transport chopper in rush mode, you want to be flying around the MCOM stations and laying down cover fire, clearing up those MCOM stations of enemy activity so that your team can get in there and arm those MCOM stations. Once those MCOM stations are armed and clear of enemy activity, you want to keep hovering around them to make sure that no one gets in there for the disarm. But at the same time, you want to move your attention to the enemy team coming in keep them preoccupied with you so that your team on the ground has an easier time of defending those MCOM stations. Once those MCOM stations explode then you can move on to the next area and repeat the process for arming the next set of MCOM stations. Okay guys that's it from me, thank you very much for watching, I hope my evasive and aggressive flying tips for the transport chopper are useful to you, if they are give me the thumbs up, let me know in the comments section below, please subscribe to my channel, I'm looking forward to releasing more Battlefield 3 videos in the future. And for all those who play Battlefield 3 on the PC, send me a friend invite, I'd be more than happy to play with you guys. Thanks very much, and I'll see you on the battlefield. Fuck you! Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>